Hi chemists, welcome back. In the last video, we focused on introducing you to some of the different properties of gases, and we took more of a qualitative approach. So for example, we didn't really do much math. We just talked a little bit about these meanings and these variables. So now we're going to kind of move into the mathematical part of this unit, and we're gonna start by talking, talking about two major laws, Boyle's and Charles's law. So to do this, your goal today is to explain the effect on gas properties using both Boyle's and Charles's laws and calculate an unknown pressure, temperature, or volume by solving algebraically for one of these variables. So let's talk about Boyle's law first. Boyle's law relates pressure and volume. So Robert Boyle was the first person to study the pressure volume relationship of gases. In 1662, Boyle proposed a law to describe this relationship. So if you notice, you have a graph here, you've got pressure on the x-axis and volume on the y-axis. So you wanna pay attention to what type of relationship is represented between pressure and volume of a gas. So notice, pressure is going to increase as you go more to the right, volume decreases as you go down. So you wanna think about what's the relationship between pressure and volume if one thing is going up and the other thing is going down. So Robert Boyle says, for a given mass of a gas at constant temperature, the volume of a gas varies inversely with pressure. So if you guessed an indirect or inverse relationship, you would be right. So let's talk a little bit about the formula. So we can simplify the relationship by using P1V1 equals P2V2, where you have P1 and P2 representing pressure in any unit. So you can have it in atmospheres, kilopascals, millimeters of mercury, but they have to match. You probably may be a little confused, like what do the ones and twos mean? Well, the one is kind of like your initial condition of the gas, and the twos are like your final condition of the gas. The V1 and the V2 represent volume, and they can be in any unit, excuse me, but they usually have to be, um, they're usually in, I would say, liters or milliliters. Sometimes I see centimeters cubed, but more than likely you won't see that. But um, the important thing here is these also have to match. So if you have one in milliliters and the other one in liters, you've got to convert one of them. So here's an example. So it says a gas has a volume of 30 liters at 150 kilopascals. What's the volume of a gas at 0.252 atm? So a strategy that I really like is I like to list out all the variables that I have in the problem. So you can see you're relating volume and you're relating pressure. So that means we must be using Boyle's law. So we're gonna write out P1, V1, P2, and V2, and just extract the information from the problem. So P1 and V1 are right there, and then um, P2 is right there, and then V2 is what we're solving for. Now, if you take a moment, you'll notice that you do not have pressure in the appropriate units because one is in kilopascals and one is in atmospheres. So this is where those pressure conversions come in handy. Now, I just have a tendency to always convert the first one into whatever the second one is, but you could absolutely convert ATM into KPA. It really doesn't matter. But I'm just going to convert this one into ATM. So I'm going to use that 101.3 KPA and then one ATM on top. And then remember, KPA and KPA cancel out. And so then when you do this, you should get one and a half ATM. So now you've got the pressure units to match, so that's good. So now the rest is just plugging and chugging. So we're going to use P1V1 equals P2V2, and we're gonna start plugging all these numbers in. And then to solve algebraically, notice that you've got a variable on the right-hand side and you've got a number next to it. So what you wanna do is divide that 0.252 to either side and then you should get that V2 equals 180 liters. And I do recommend that you try this to make sure that you're doing the algebra correctly. As far as sig figs are concerned, every teacher might have some different guidelines, but with sig figs, usually I tend to look at the numbers that I'm multiplying or dividing by to decide how many sig figs my answer is gonna have. So since one and a half has two sig figs, that's the least out of all of these, that's why I had two sig figs in my answer. And then as far as the unit is concerned, right, when you divide 0.252 to the other side, atmospheres and atmospheres is canceling out. So you'll get 
um, leaders as the unit. And it's important to obviously include units with all numbers. So let's talk about Charles's law. Charles's law relates temperature and volume now. So uh, Jacques, Jacques, I guess you would say, Charles studied the effect of temperature on volume of gas at constant pressure. There he is. So if you notice, this is the graph of temperature and volume. So this was in 1787, he proposed a law to describe his observations. You may be interested in what this dotted line is representing. This is actually extrapolating, we could say extrapolating data. So this data is actually going back towards the origin, which is right a temperature of zero Kelvin, which you guys know as absolute zero. So um, Charles is very interesting because not only did he um, define this relationship, but he's also one of the person, one of the people that's credited with being able to define what absolute zero is. It's pretty cool. So there he is. So he says for a given mass of a gas, which basically just means that the mass isn't changing at constant pressure, the volume of a gas is directly proportional to its temperature in Kelvin. So remember we said temperature always has to be in Kelvin. That's really, really important. We can simplify this formula by putting V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2 where V1 and V2 are the volume in any unit. Again, they have to be in liters or milliliters, but they have to match. T1 and T2 is going to be temperature. And this one, you don't have to have a choice here. It has to be in Kelvin. In order for this relationship to be true, you have to be um, adding 273 to any degree Celsius temperatures. So here's an example. It says a gas has a volume of four liters at 27 degrees Celsius. What is its volume at 153 degrees Celsius? So again, I'm gonna extrapolate the information from the problem. And notice, again, I added 273 to that temperature to get it automatically in Kelvin. I tend to do that right away so I don't forget. I'm solving for the volume, and then there's the other temperature, and again, added 273 to that. So it looks like all the units are good. Um, you don't really need to worry about the temperature because they're both in Kelvin. So I'm going to plug and chug now using V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2. To solve this algebraically, you could um, do some like cross multiplication, right? So you multiply diagonally. Um, so it's really up to you. Some students like to simplify the four liters over 300 Kelvin. So like do that division and then multiply by 426 Kelvin. So it, it's really, it's really up to you. Um, but then when you, if you do this correctly, you should get a volume of 5.7 liters. And I, of course, always recommend that you try it to make sure that you know how to use your calculator and you're doing okay with that. So you should get 5.7 liters at the end of this. All right, it's time to practice, guys. So you're going to be completing worksheet two. Thank you so much for watching.